Hi friends, hope you are doing great. Today we are going to see load balancer concept. So what is load balancer? Second, we are going to see about cloud load balancing. Third, we are going to see types of cloud load balancing. Fourth, we are going to see global versus regional load balancing. And next one is external versus internal load balancing. Next is how external and internal load balancing work together. And finally, we are going to see load balancing features. So in this a video we are going to see first four only in the remaining video then we will see the remaining next upcoming video we will see the third uh, sorry fifth sixth seventh okay let's start now what is a load balancer a load balancer distributes user traffic across multiple instances of your applications by spreading the load load balancing reduces the risk that your application experience performs issues so you can see this uh, flow diagram you can see here so next we are going to see about the cloud load balancing cloud load balancing it is a fully distributed software defined managed service it is not hardware based so you don't need to manage a physical load balancing infrastructure by using cloud load balancing you can serve content as close as possible to your users on your system that can respond to over 1 million queries per second. Cloud load balancing is a fully distributed software defined managed service. So next we are going to see type, types of cloud load balancing. So this table shows the characteristics of each Google cloud load balancer including whether the load balancer uses an internal or an external IP address whether the load balancer is regional or global and the supported network service tiers and traffic types. So here you can see internal or external. So internal and external we have and regional or global we have regional type and global type which we have and uh, traffic type for internal TCP or UDP and for internal HTTP or HTTPS and for external we have this traffic type TCP, UDP, ESP or ICMP and external we have TCP, SSL and HTTP or HTTPS and load balancer type we have internal TCP, UDP, internal HTTPS and for external we have external TCP, UDP network, TCP proxy, SSL proxy and external HTTPS. So no need to worry friends we are going to see each and everything. Next we are going to see global versus regional load balancing. Use global load balancing when you when your backends are distributed across multiple regions. Your users need access to the same applications and content and you want to provide access by using a single any cost IP address. Global load balancing can also provide IPv6 termination. Use regional load balancing when we need to use regional load balancing. When your backends are in one region and you only require IPv4 termination, that time we can use this regional load balancing. Next we are going to see load balancer resilience. Load balancer resilience we are going to see. Resilience it meaning resilience means the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. That is the meaning of resilience. Okay, load balancers are a critical component of most highly available applications. Google Cloud offers both regional and global load balancers. In either case, it is important to understand that the resilience of your overall application depends not just on which load balancer you choose, but also on the redundancy of your backend services. This table shows load balancer resilience based on the load balancers distribution or scope. So load balancer scope is global then if you are seeing architecture each load balancer is distributed across all region. Resilient at zonal outage it's, it is there and resilient to regional outage also it is there only. So next one is regional. Each we are going to see the architecture. Each load balancer is distributed across multiple zones in the region. So here resilient to zonal outages it's fine and resilient to regional outage we are going to see an outage in a given region affects the regional load balancers in that region so it is affecting okay next we are going to move next slide 
external versus internal load balancing google cloud load balancers can be divided into external and internal load balancers external load balancers distribute traffic coming from the internet to your google cloud virtual private cloud vpc network global load balancing records that use the premium tier of network service tiers for regional load balancing you can use standard tier next we are going to see about the internal load balancing internal load balancers distribute traffic to instances inside of google cloud so you can see external we have external https load balancing ssl proxy load balancing tcp proxy load balancing tcp udp network load balancing next one is internal internal tcp udp load balancing internal http yes load balancing next we are going to see how external and internal load balancing work together this diagram shows a common use case how to use how to use the external and internal load balancing together in this explanation traffic is distributed as follows traffic traffic from users in san francisco io and singapore is directed to an external load balancer 1.1.1.1 Next, the external load balancer distributes the traffic to different regions in a Google Cloud network. After the traffic is inside of Google Cloud, two internal load balancers 10.10.10 and 10.20.1.1 each distribute traffic within their respective regions, US Central one and Asia East one. Within US Central one, internal load balancer 10.10.10.10 distributes traffic between two zones us central one hyphen a and us central one hyphen b within asia hyphen east one internal load balancer 10.20.1.1 distributes traffic within one zone asia east one hyphen a so next we are going to see what is the traffic type so here this type of traffic that you need your load balancer to handle is another factor in determining which load balancer to use traffic type for http and https traffic we can use external and internal https load balancing for tcp traffic we can use tcp proxy load balancing network load balancing internal tcp udp load balancing next one is traffic type if it is traffic type is for udp traffic then we can use network load balancing internal tcp udp load balancing and finally for ec esp or icmp traffic we can use network load balancing next we are going to see the underlying technology of google cloud load balancer this this section provides more information about each type of google cloud load balancer including links to overview documentation for a deeper understanding so google front end gfes it means gfe it means google front ends Google front end Google front ends are software defined distributed systems that are located in Google point of presence POP point of presence and perform global load balancing in conjunction with other system and control planes next one is what is andromedia and what sorry what is andromeda andromeda it's a Google clouds software defined network virtualization stack next we are going to see what is maglow maglev maglev is a distributed system for a network load balancing next one is no proxy it is an open source edge and service proxy it is designed for cloud native applications now we are going to see each and everything what is the internal https load balancing what is the external https load balancing what is the internal tcp udp load balancing what is the external tcp udp network load balancing what is a ssl proxy load balancing and finally what is tcp proxy load balancing okay let's see one by one so what is the internal https load balancing internal https load balancing it is uh, built on the andromeda network virtualization stack and is managed service based on the open source envoy envoy proxy this load balancer provides proxy based load balancing of layer 7 application data we can specify how traffic is routed with url maps the load balancer uses an internal ip address that access the front end to your backends next we are going to see what is external https load balancing 
HTTPS load balancing is implemented on GFEs. GFEs are distributed globally and operate together using Google's global network and control plane. In premium tier, GFEs offer multi-region load balancing, directing traffic to the closest healthy backend that has capacity and terminating HTTPS traffic as close as possible to your users. Next, we are going to see internal TCP UDP load balancing. Internal TCP UDP load balancing is built on the Andromeda network virtualization stack. Internal TCP UDP load balancing enables you to load balance TCP UDP traffic behind an internal load balancing IP address that is accessible only to your internal virtual machine instances by using internal TCP UDP load balancing and internal load balancing IP address is configured to act as the front end to your internal backend instances. You use only internal IP addresses for your internal load balanced service. Overall, your configuration becomes similar. Internal TCP UDP load balancing supports regional managed instance groups so that you can auto scale across a region, protecting, protecting, protecting your service from zonal failures. So next one is external TCP UDP network load balancing. Network load balancing is built on Maglev. This load balancer enables you to load balanced traffic on your systems based on incoming IP protocol data, including address protocol and port optional. It is a regional non proxist load balancing system. That is a network load balancer is a pass through load balancer that does not proxy connection from clients. So next one is SSL proxy load balancing. So SSL proxy load balancing. It is implemented on GFEs, GFEs that is distributed globally. If you choose the premium tier of network service tiers, an SSL proxy load balancer is global. In premium tier, you can deploy backends in multiple regions and the load balancer automatically directs user traffic to the closest region that has capacity. If you choose the standard tier, an SSL proxy load balancer can only direct traffic among backends in the single region. Next, we are going to see TCP proxy load balancing. TCP proxy load balancing is implemented on GFEs that are distributed globally. If you choose the premium tier of network service tiers, a TCP proxy load balancer is global. In premium tier, you can deploy backends in multiple regions and the load balancer automatically directs user traffic to the closest region that has capacity. If you choose the standard tier, a TCP proxy load balancer can only direct traffic among backends in the single region. So we have seen about the what is the global and uh, under the global we have external HTTP load balancing and SSL proxy load balancing TCP proxy load balancing. Under the regional we have Andromeda, Andromeda Envoy and Maglow. So we have seen each and everything. So next we are going to see Google Cloud offers the following load balancing features. A single IP address to serve as the front end, automatic intelligent auto scaling of your backends and external load balancing for when your users reach your applications from the internet. Next features internal load balancing for when your clients are inside of Google Cloud. Next feature is regional load balancing for when your applications are available in a single region. Next feature, global load balancing for when your applications are available across the world. And next one is pass through load balancing, proxy based load balancing, layer 4 based load balancing to direct traffic based on the data from network and transport layer protocols such as TCP, UDP, ESP and ICMP or sorry EC such as the transport layer protocol such as TCP, UDP, ESP or ICMP. Next one is layer 7 based load balancing to add request routing decision based on the attributes such as HTTP header and the uniform resource identifier. Next one is the inter integration with cloud CDN for cached content delivery. Next we are going to see interfaces. You can configure and update your load balancer by using the interfaces. First one is a G Cloud command line tool and next one is a Google Cloud console and finally REST API. Thanks a lot friends. We have seen the concept today. 
so we have done with the concepts load balancing concepts we, we are going to see the demo in our upcoming videos so we have done with the concepts thanks a lot have a great day bye bye